Hello everyone. The Mixolydian mode is one that you have to know because it is everywhere. It's in things like Sweet Home Alabama, Back in Black, uh, Sweet Child of Mine in the verse. It's in Norwegian Wood. All right now, my generation, I could go on and on. In this video, we'll learn the theory behind Mixolydian, how we can recognize it by ear and visually, and how to apply it. So Mixolydian is the fifth mode of the major scale. And what that means is if we take a major scale, but start on the fifth note and finish on the fifth note, and really treat that note like it's a home note, our tonic, we get a different sound or a different mode. Here's an example. If I play the C major scale, I've got the notes of C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. If I play the same scale, but starting and finishing from the G, I've got a different sounding scale. It doesn't sound like, say, a G major scale, which would be Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do, with an F sharp in it. Instead, I flattened my seventh note like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, flat seven, and back to the G. So with music theory, we always compare to a parallel major scale. So in this case, if I compare my G mixolydian to a G major scale, you'll notice there's a flat seven. So the formula for mixolydian is one, two, three, four, five, six, flat seven. The best way to be able to use the mixolydian mode across the whole neck in any key is to first learn the caged method of the major scale. It's a method whereby you use chords as landmarks to help you find all the different scale patterns, of which there's five. That covers the whole neck. Once you know those scale patterns, you can adapt them for the different modes by changing the root notes. I've done videos, which I'll put links to in the description, all about modes and the cage method. Also, I'll put links on the screen. But if you really want to know about music theory inside out, I recommend you check out the link to my book in the description, which is called Music Theory and Application for Guitarists. It starts from the ground and works up. So it starts with things like intervals and triads, harmonizing the major scale, and goes all the way up to things like melodic minor, harmonic minor, whole tone scales, and much more. Let's look at that somewhere else in the neck. Let's look at that down here. If I take a G major scale here, but flatten that F sharp to make it an F, G mixolydian scale. If I do it across two octaves, I've got this. Perhaps I can add a little bit on the end. So you may have noticed that mixolydian sounds different to major. The progression itself sounds different. It's more bluesy and rocky. And of course the scale sounds bluesier and rockier and less predictable than a major scale because of that minor seventh or flattened seventh. A major scale is very much la 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 and very familiar to us. Mixolydian is la 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 That little minor seventh there that I drew attention to gives us a bit of extra edge and also it, uh, it's present in our minor pentatonic scale. So it's a, a very familiar sound without sounding so familiar that it's predictable like a major scale. Now when we look at the structure of the, that scale, you'll see it's got a major third. That's what a major third looks like. So we can play over chords with major thirds, like a G major chord, or we can play over a chord with that flat seven in it, or minor seventh. So we could play a G7 chord like this. So Mixolydian is our kind of go-to mode when playing over dominant seven chords. There are exceptions, but most of the time we'll be using Mixolydian over such a chord. The problem is, what if we've got just a simple triad of G? Because that chord could be behaving like the first chord in the key of G, it could be acting like the fourth chord in the key of D, or it could be behaving like the fifth chord in the key of C. And whichever one it's behaving as determines what mode we're going to play. Now there's three major modes from the major scale. You've got the first mode of the major scale, which is Ionian or major. You've got the fourth mode, which is Lydian, and the fifth mode, which is mixed Lydian. So when you have a major chord, you've got three modes to choose from. Over that G chord, I could literally play G major, I could play a G Lydian improvisation, or I could play G mixed Lydian. The chord is ambiguous, it doesn't tell me a huge amount of information. If, however, I make it a dominant seven chord, there's only one place you find a dominant seven chord in any key, and that is the five chord. Well, unless we're talking about key changes or minor keys, but for now, we're gonna look at major keys, and the only time you see a dominant seven chord is the five chord. So straight away, you need the five mode, you need mixolydian. Now, what we would do, however, if we've got just a G chord and nothing else, we don't know enough information to know what mode we need to play. So we need to rely on the other chords in the progression to tell us what to do. So let's take, for example, a chord progression that goes G, F, G. And let's really resolve on that G chord. Now, whenever you see two major chords together, that only happens in one place in a key, on the four and the five chord. So if I've got a four and a five chord and I really resolve on that five chord, I need the fifth mode. 
So in this case, if I've got G, F, G, I really am playing chords from the key of C. You won't find those chords in any other key. So, unless we've got a key change or the relative minor key. So that means I need to play G mixed religion. However, if I had these chords, if I had to say G, then A, and resolved on the G, two major chords next to each other like that must be a four and a five chord. And this time I'm resolving on the four chord, so I'd need the fourth mode, I'd need G Lydian. That's the fourth chord of the key, uh, fourth mode of the key of D. What if I had to say uh, C, D, and resolve on the G? In that case, I've got two major chords here, C and D, four and five, but I'm not resolving on either of them, I'm resolving on the other major chord in the key, so I'm resolving on the one chord, I would need the first mode. Let's take a real life example of this. Let's say we've got a, a, a song like Sweet Home Alabama. <laughs> So what I've got there is D, C, or C add 9, and G. Now let me play that as bar chords so you can really see what's going on. D, C, two major chords next to each other, and G. So I've got a five chord, four chord, one chord, but I'm really resolving on that D. So that song is using a, a modal chord progression, a mixolydian chord progression. So you could solo over it using D mixolydian. Now you might ask, is that the same as being in the key of D? Well. Some people would say this is in the key of D, <clears throat> which is fine, except the chord of C doesn't belong in that key. So you can still call it the key of D and just say you're playing modally. You could say it's in the key of G, all the chords belong to the key of G. That's, that's fine as well. Uh, but just be clear if you're in a band and someone says, what key do you do Sweet Home Alabama and Just say D, it's a lot easier. But when it comes to soloing, know that you can't play a D major scale, it won't work. So let's see what it sounds like if I play that into my looper. If I play D major, this won't work, because you've got the natural seven. Clashes. Now I'll play up with a flat seven, I'll play D mixolydian, so I've got two, three, four. And that's fine. Let's take another modal progression. Let's say we've got an A going to a G, that's a five and a four chord. You can make it sound really mixolydian by instead of doing this, can leave the A notes on the bottom of both chords. So you get A, G, over A. That's a very mixed religion sound. Sounds like a Michael Jackson song to me. Hey, pretty baby with the high heels on. Let's see what that sounds like in the pedal. Now when you have a chord progression that's modal, you don't have to have the four and a five chord next to each other. You don't actually have to have the four chord at all. You could have any progression that belongs to a key where the fifth chord is really resolving. And then you would play the mixed Lydian scale. I nearly forgot to say when I first made this video that there's a great cheat you can do, where instead of playing mixed Lydian, you can start by simply playing a pentatonic scale and adding the extra notes when you're more comfortable. So for example, in A mixed Lydian, I could just play an A minor pentatonic scale. Now technically it's wrong because it's got a minor third, and we need it to be a major third. But that's why you see people doing this, slightly bending that wrong note up towards the correct major third. You can even slide it or hammer and get that kind of cool wrong to right sound. That wrong note in a pentatonic scale is also here. So I can bend that correct, and it's here, like that. I could slide it. And when I'm comfortable, I can take my pentatonic scale and start adding blue notes, mixolydian notes. I can even add the major pentatonic scale. I can add the blue notes to that and mix the whole thing together. And so on. Anyway, I hope that video was useful to you. If so, please click like and subscribe. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.